So, I mean, my beard is looking like a bunch of hair that's on my face, whether I want it to be or not. So I, I'm glad that you like that. It. it says something like, are we getting a 10th anniversary edition of Wise Man's Fear? Because again, it's asked every stream at least a couple of times. Eventually, but no news yet. And then maybe, if, like, it'll start pointing to people towards a sign up for a newsletter where I'm planning on, like, having a newsletter for everyone. Um, and again, no no rush there. I'm just, I always feel so bad that that question gets asked again and again. And if I answer it, that means everyone who's always here has to hear me talk about it again and again, which is boring. Uh, it, we don't have the FAQ yet because I'll need to like maybe put that up on the blog or find a place for it on the website. Oh, Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear helped me get through a tough 2020. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. It's no worries. I mean, it's the problem is, is literally thousands of people tune into the stream every time I'm on here for a couple of hours and a lot of them for the first time show up. And so, see, and again here, uh, I've been a fan for years, just seeing your Twitch now. So exciting. A lot of people come in for the first time, and one of the first things they'll ask is like, oh, what about book three? Or, hey, are we getting a special edition of Wise Man's Fear? And the answer is, like, always the same, but just because I have given an answer before, like, sometimes dozens of times, doesn't mean that they're not curious about that. Right now, uh, no news on book three. Rest assured that if there was news, there would be a press release and it'd be on my blog and it'd be the first thing that I say. Um, so if you, you know, using the miracle of Google, if you can't find news, Kins says, your books changed my life. I don't know how they did and I love it. So like you finish the books and you're like, I feel different. I feel changed, but I don't know in what way I'm changed. And then you realize that you'd turned into, I don't know, maybe like a werewolf, I'm guessing. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Originally, I was going to go with cockroach kind of like as a literary reference to that Kafka story. <laughs> this book turned me into a lich. Could some, I want to do a special edition of of the name of the wind with just a bunch of weird quotes from people that I like. You know, like this book turned me into a lich would be a great promotional blurb. Uh, here's a question. Which country has more readers of your books? Um, I Obviously, uh, America has a lot because that's where I'm from and I wrote it in English. But actually, Spain has sold so, so many of the books there. I might have more per capita readers in Spain than I do in the U.S., maybe? I, actually, I can't track readers. I can only track copies sold. Um, but, like, Spain has sold a ton of books, and they have, like, a sixth of the population of the U.S. No, Germany sells really well, too, but not nearly as well as Spain. I, I, although, maybe, gosh, I'm actually really curious. God, I'd love to do that as a blog. Like, the thing is, it would take so long to, like, do the math. I haven't read The Shadow of the Wind. Uh, although I, it's on my it's on my list, you really had trouble finding a place to buy the second book in Brazil. Yeah, I mean sometimes bookstores don't have it. You can always ask a bookstore to order a book, though. I mean I, I don't know what con I don't I'm pretty sure whatever country you're in, they they will let you order books if it's not on the shelf. Um, hey Pat. Have you seen this Reddit post comparing your prose to other great writers by the numbers language? Okay, I'm curious. I'll look at this. Why do some... Okay, how about this? Let's... Maybe we'll look at this together real quick. Um, I always feel kind of weird reading something. Why does... I'm really glad that it wasn't a porn link, I'll tell you that. Um, I was looking into prose styles for... See, that's... Uh, the thing is, I trust you guys. My chat is very civilized, kind, considerate. I love that I trust you guys and that you reward that trust by being fucking cool. Thank you, chat. Why do some authors come across as more, more poetic? I did a prose analysis of Tolkien, Sanderson, Rothfuss, Jemison, and Erickson. Wow. Uh, here's what I learned. I was looking into prose styles for a video I made recently. Who the hell is this that's doing this cool math? 
Oh, this is just like 13 hours ago. I pulled two paragraphs each from Tolkien, Sanderson, Rothfuss, Jemison, Arison. Analyzed them for a few things. The paragraphs I pulled were descriptive, no dialogue, no action scenes. These would best represent the author's voice, unmixed with character voices. I looked at three key areas, average sentence length, adjective, adverb usage, Germanic versus Latinate word usage. To be clear, I wasn't being exhaustive or even super academic, just testing to see if I wanted to dig further. And in the future, I'll look at sentence structure and punctuation usage, among other things. Here's a visual rundown. Tolkien and Rothfuss are heavy on Germanic words. Um, their word choice gives them a deliberate poetic feel. Tolkien uses a lot of modifiers. Rothfuss keeps those to a minimum. Sanderson uses comparatively high number of Latinate words. Um, it, it seems high until you realize how hard day-to-day -day use of Latinates is in spoken English. I think this makes Sanderson's prose much more casual. Jemison fell in the middle. Arison had the longest sentence length with Sanderson levels of Latinate words. I know the least about his writing. I'm not sure what to make of it. So I'm really curious about this person's, see, this is super interesting to me because this overlaps. Here's the thing. I don't know about that petition, but the straight, uh, the straight dope is that there is some horrific voter suppression stuff going on and it has been going on for a long time. It's just now really getting the press that it deserves and coming to light in the right ways. Um, it's super important. We're not going to dig into that right here because that's not the purpose of this thing, but uh, of this particular thing, but it, it does bear, it, it does bear discussion and, and you should be aware of it. Um, and you should care if you live here in the U.S. Um, no thanks. Um, legendarium. <sighs> okay, that seems like... Read from a couple of samples. Yeah, see, and so here this person says, if you enjoy it and have other ideas for how to quantify pro style, let me know. Um... And this is where it's, in my opinion, very tricky to the point of being very dangerous because you'll notice they say things here. And again, I'm not bagging on this person. They're doing, they're doing a cool thing that I'm very interested in. But um, it's easy to look at numbers and pretend you're doing science. But it seems like, you know, Tolkien and Rothfuss are heavy on Germanic words, period. So that is, it's like, hey, I, I did numbers and this is true. Here is a fact. And then it says, I think their word choice gives them a deliberate poetic feel. And it's like, ooh, okay. So you went from a fact to a conclusion. But step two needs to be more than a question mark before you get to step three, profit. Um, in my opinion, Germanic words are simpler, briefer, and plainer than, say, French words or Latinate words. Um, because I've studied some etymology and the history of the English language and because I'm a geek for words. So I'm curious there. Also, counting things like modifiers again it's easy to do math to things but one of the things i studied in grad school was actually um the um assessment of writing like literally how does one assess writing because i was going to be an english teacher and i was an english teacher and one of the things you learn is that the assessment of writing is mind bogglingly difficult to the point of being, it's it's the one reason that like uh, of of all the jobs that are sort of safe from being outsourced to computers, um, uh, writing and the assessment of writing, you know, uh, you know the that little squiggly underline that shows up in all your documents saying you misspelled a thing. Cool, thank you for your help. 
or when it auto suggests text, you know, that's something. But truthfully, computers do not and cannot understand the difference between the sentences, the tiger is ready to eat and the roast is ready to eat. Um, only people who parse things in transrational ways can, can get that. Um, and so um, it's very easy to draw wildly wrong conclusions based on interesting numbers. That's why statistical analysis is very dangerous. 